Chapter 3. It's the morning of your first official day as an Alpha Tau Pledge. Couldn't you let me sleep for a little longer? Sorry, Tal. We totally robbed you of your beauty sleep. I don't know. She still looks pretty damn fine from where I'm sitting. Don't tell me Channing has competition, Lupe. Oh, come on. Even Lupe's isn't uh, bold enough to make a move on Channing's girl. Excuse me, Channing's girl? You turn up on Callie giving you a cold look from the kitchen. You scowl annoyed at how good she looks this early. How delusional can you get? You want to come over here and say that? You... Don't tell me you two are bickering already. Channing saunters into the kitchen, skin glistening from, with sweat from his morning run. We weren't bickering. Kel is just being rude. I'm not being rude, I'm being honest. You're honestly being a pain in my... Enough. You're both initiates. You're equals. Act like it. Equals. You can't be serious, Channing. I am. You may be legacy recruit, but my... Your lineage won't help you pass the blood moon. Hmm. Especially considering how long it took your latent powers to awaken. A flicker of anger crosses her face, and even Loopy seems to realize she said too much. Sorry, I shouldn't have... Please stop talking. Lupe's just saying what we're all thinking, Kella. You need to train if you want to survive. In fact, I think it's time for your first test. A one-on-one -on -one sparring match. You want me to fight her? I take back everything I said. This is going to be so much fun. Before you can protest, Channing and Cal are already heading to the backyard, rattling the alphas as they go. You should see your face, Dal. You're not afraid she'll kick your ass, are you? Of course I'm afraid she'll kick my ass. After lending you some workout gear, Lupe leads you and Asher to the backyard where you find a makeshift fighting ring. On the other side of the ring, you see her warming up with a couple of girls who are obviously twins. Oh, is that the girl Cal is going to spar with? No way. Cal is going to totally wipe the floor up with her. Yellow sweater is Romy. Blue sweater is Sumera. They've been Cal's flunkies since they were kids. Your gaze quickly drifts from the twins to Cal rather than changing into the workout gear. Okay. She's practically naked. Honestly, the underwear is a courtesy. Werewolf blood runs hot, so uh, when they spar, we usually do it completely naked. You find your gaze drawn to Channing. Your thoughts turn visions of his muscled back, his chest, his abs, his bare, and glistening with sweat. Now's not the time to get distracted. Yet Channing notices you staring and flashes a crooked smirk that just barely reveals a sharp, dagger-sharp canine. Try to survive, new blood. I would hate to see that body of yours wrecked before I can enjoy it. You scowl, he speaks in your mind, but can't help your blood from rushing, so making you dampen and throb with need. Filled with a muddle of anger, annoyance, arousal, you march into the ring and face Kala. She gives you a haughty once-over. Still not too late to back out, puppy. Kala, ain't the best initiate win. Oh, that would be me. So maybe you should just concede now before I mess up that pretty little face of yours. A ripple of murmured laughter passes through the crowd. You ball your hands in the fists. Fine, you got something to prove, then I'm right here. Come and get it. Channing blows the whistle. 
Before you have a chance to react, Kala launches herself across the ring with a superhuman speed, slamming you with a fierce roundhouse. You go down hard, pain shooting up your side, you spot Channing watching you with narrowed eyes. Damn it. You scramble up, teeth bared, but before you can find your balance, Kala crouches and kicks. She's trying to take out my ankles. I should... You should jump, but... You leap out of the way just in time. Her leg sweep dismisses you by inches. She loses her balance and staggers back. That's the best you can do, Gala. My grandmother moves faster than you do. She rolls to all fours and fixes you with a sharp smirk. I'm just getting started. As the crowd howls encouragement, you look for Channing in the crowd and find him watching you intently, a gleam of approval in his eyes. More than just a pretty face, huh? Nice work. As much as you hate to admit it, hearing his praise makes you uh, makes your confidence soar. And that's why the Alpha chose me. With a feral snarl, you begin circling, stalking Kala like a predator. It would be pretty embarrassing getting your ass kicked by an outsider like me, wouldn't it? Your family would be so disappointed. For Kala, that's the last straw. She roars and flies at you with a furious combo of jabs and hooks. You don't know a damn thing about my family. For a moment, you're overwhelmed, but you spot an opening and search for tackling her to the ground. Get the hell off of me. Stop struggling already and give up. But as you grapple hard for dominance, a whistle pierces the air. You look up to see Channing looming over you, growling. Stop! That's exactly what I said to my cats, too. Is it over? Good for Kala. Yes, it's over. I've seen enough to know what I'm working with. I didn't want her uh, to hurt her any more than I already have. Hurt me. Laughter ripples through the crowd, Kala snarls. I'll show you what hurt really feels like. I said it's over, Kala. With a grunt, she pushes you off and rolls to her feet. As she walks away, Channing puts a hand on her shoulder. You did good. Now go walk it off. An unexpected compliment brings a glow to her face and a simmer of jealousy to your gut. She smiles prettily. I was just showing Tal how it's really done. And with an infuriating wink, she saunters back towards the house with her twin minions in tow. Ugh. Suddenly Channing hauls you to your feet, shaking, thinking an arm around your waist and yanking you hard against him. Locking eyes with you, he slides his hand around the curve of your hips, his fingers leaving trails of fire in their way. You did better than I expected, new blood. Though your fighting technique could use some work. Pressed close like this, the heady scent of it makes you dizzy, but doesn't quite quell the anger burning in your gun. You should have let us keep fighting. I need to learn how to fight. Why would you stop me from getting that experience? Maybe I was tired of seeing you sweating and panting and straddling another wolf. You pull back annoyed, his expression grows serious. This isn't going to be easy, Tal. If you want to pass the Blood Moon, you have a lot of work ahead of you. Kala's precious legacy might be an obstacle for her, but your lack of one is an obstacle for you. You'll have to hone every instinct in your mind, every muscle in your body. His eyes shamelessly travel down the length of you, from your breasts straining against your sports bra to the way your spandex leggings hug your legs and rear. And how do I do you propose I exercise my body? Some time alone with me would do some do the trick. I'll train you one on one somewhere quiet. You're gonna need my help, Tal. Let's get started. Just because you're the Alpha doesn't mean I can't resist you. But if I'm gonna going to do this, then I wanna learn from the best. 
glad to know you see it my way. Come on. Channing leads you through the trees to a small, quiet clearing beyond the house. Welcome to Alpha Tau Fight School. Channing stretches out and grins as he catches you, admiring the play of muscles across his shoulders. First lesson, clothing is optional. You might be shy in front of the rest of the pack, but don't be afraid to show some skin with me. I'll be more comfortable in my clothes, but training in underwear might help me feel more like a wolf. Strip down to my underwear, keep my clothing on. Hmm. I guess do underwear. You lock eyes with Channing and shuck off your leggings, peel off your sports, stop to reveal a lacy bra. You know, for extra support. His gaze roves openly over the swell of your breasts and a curl smiles from his lips. I'm not complaining, I'm just glad you came prepared. Now today, we need to strengthen your hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Someday, you'll have to defend yourself and your packmates. We can't afford any wink weak links. We can't wolf out in public, so we often have to rely on our human strength. I'll teach you how to do that. In that case, I'm ready when you are. Let's start with the basics. Show me your defensive stance. You crouch, raising a fist in front of your face. Chaining circles you silently, assessing you in a way that makes your skin tingle. Like this. He moves in close, grasps your hips, pivoting them to correct your stance. His hands, strong and commanding, seem to linger longer than necessary, warmth spreading through your body. But just as that warmth begins to bloom in desire, he steps away and stands in front of you. First things first, we need to make sure you know how to dodge. You brace yourself as he throws a punch angling for your face. You, you really don't want to crouch down when someone's throwing a punch at your face, but the options are swerving left, jump up, which then would hit you center mass, and then crouching down. We'll do down. You drop into a low crouch before his fist can make contact. Were you seriously going to hit me in the face? I would have stopped at the last second. Wouldn't want to ruin a work of art. You roll your eyes, suppressing a smile. If you're going to go easy on me, what's the point? I have to go easy on you for now. You have no idea what I'm capable of. You raise your eyebrows in a challenge, and he smirks, straining across the clearing to a massive boulder. Trust me. He hoists the boulder over his head like it's made of paper, and hurls it into the woods. You do not want me using my full strength. Your mind unhelpfully floods the uh, with images of Channing, lifting your naked body like you weigh nothing, pinning you against the wall. Okay. Try to hit me. His voice snaps you out of it. You feel flushed as you assume an offensive stance. I should punch him, kick him, punch him. You throw a jab followed by a right cross, but he easily dodges your every move. Too slow. I like it slow. His grin is sultry. So do I, but not in a fight. Now try again. You throw another punch, but instead of ducking, he grabs your arm and yanks you close against him. Your mouth is inches away from his, his breath warmth on your face. You try to break free, but you're caught in this fierce grip. The price of his fingers and your flesh makes you shiver with sudden need. Your heart races and you lean into the heat of his muscled chest. And now I have you right where I want you. Now, your form's not bad. He slackens his grip, and his hands lie down the length of your body, a little growl rumbling in his chest. You grow dizzy when his fingertips brush your hip and toy the waistband of your panties. I thought you wanted to fight, not to cop a feel. It's called multitasking. His hands came down the sides of your bare thighs, making you throb and dampen at the thought of reaching in. 
You really shouldn't let your guard down. What do you... He grips your waist and spins you and tackles you to the ground. You flail against him. Cheater, you distracted me on purpose. It's not my fault you're so easily thrown off guard. Filled with equal parts fury and desire, you paw at his shoulders and hook your leg around his waist. Grinding would be too easy. Yeah, well, two can play this game. You shift your hips and throw all your strength into rolling him onto his back. Not bad. New blood. Straddle his hips and press down. He sucks in a breath as the heat of your core meets his own. Like I said, you roll your hips and a thrill courses through you. And Pupil, Channing's pupils dilate, darkening his eyes with lust. Two, you can play this game. A husky growling moan rips through him, and he presses his face into the crook of your neck. Your head spins when the uh, length of him rubs against you, straining against the confines of his shorts. You're playing dirty. I learned from the best. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You bury your teeth and take a quick, hard nip at his throat. But he growls on a moan and goes slack when you bite down hard. Then soothe the mark with your tongue. Mine. As if he could read your thoughts, he snarls and bites down on your shoulder, making your whole body convulse with need. Is this how you plan to disarm all of your opponents? Why, does that make you jealous? He pulls back and there's something new in his expression, something almost like affection. But it's gone as soon as it appeared, and suddenly he's pushing you away and rolling to his feet. You have to take this seriously, Tal. Your life depends on it. You rise to your feet and assume a defensive stance he taught you. Okay, then hit me with your best shot. Exhausted from your grueling day of training, you arrive back at your apartment to find Marcus pacing outside. Tell, where have you been? I've been calling your phone all day, and when you didn't answer, I thought... What, that they ate me? I don't know what I thought. Are you okay? Sorry to worry you, but I didn't have time to grab my phone. What do you mean you didn't have time? Where were you? I was working out. Oh, I, I, sorry, I, I tend to be a worrier. You open your door and he follows you into your apartment, an expected look on his face. So how did it go? You still haven't told me what happened last night. You're quiet, deep in thought as you pull out your overnight bag and start to pack. <clears throat> um, wait, are you going somewhere? Back to Alpha House, initiates are required to live together, so I'm moving in. Really? This is perfect. Finding an inside source on Alpha Tau. Co so come on, spill. Anything sketchy happened last night? You hesitate. There's no way you could spill Alpha Tau's big secret to Marcus, but you also need him off your tail. Literally. Um, honestly, Marcus? Mm, most of them are just really nice. Well, except for this guy, Randy. And the one girl who really hates me. She's the other initiate, a legacy. She's not happy to share a spotlight with a newcomer like me. So, uh, not to make this about me or anything, but, um, now that you'll be there full time, you're gonna dig up Alpha Tau's dark secrets for me, right? I don't know, Marcus. I'm having a hard enough time getting them to trust me. I have an idea that might help. To be an Alpha Tau, you have to look like one. Alpha Tau's got the Pacific Northwest chick thing going on, right? But what you're wearing now is just, uh, not that. Here. He rifles at your clothes and puts together a shockingly accurate representation of Alpha Tau for fashion. You should consider going into a fashion, uh, journalism. But keep that in mind. Seriously, this is the perfect everyday look. You'll fit right in. I mean, 
I guess. I don't see anything wrong with what we were wearing prior, but whatever. You turn in front of the mirror, admiring yourself from every angle. What do you think? I think I'm looking at Alpha Tau's newest member, and it's hottest. Yeah, this is definitely gonna help me fit in with the Alphas. And the press Channing while I'm at it. As you toss the rest of your things in your bag, your phone buzzes on the nightstand. You pick it up to find a text from Channing. Where are you? I don't like to keep be, be kept waiting, pal. Aren't I worth waiting for? Yes, but we need you at the house now. So bossy, fine. I'm on my way. Channing's waiting for me, gotta go. Hey, Tal, wait. I know Channing's been putting a, on a nice guy act for you, but watch out for him. He's not what he seems. Seriously, don't worry about me, I can handle Channing. For your sake, I really hope you're right. When you get back to the house, several Alpha Tals greet you warmly. Sweet fight today. You're definitely gonna fit in here. Love what you're wearing. Oh, this? This is something I had laying around. But your good mood disintegrates as you turn the corner and walk into Randy, the guy who was rude to you last night. Look, Randy, I'm not really in the mood for more of your insults. Uh, nah. You, uh... You look good. Props for trying to fit in. It looks like he wants to say more, but his mouth snaps shut and he just walks away. Okay, then. You walk into the common room to find Channing waiting for you on the couch with knowing smirk on his face. So, you can follow orders. When I want to. Don't you know better than to bait a wolf, Tal? I like a little danger in my life. It spices things up. Jenny notices your new outfit and a sensuous smile curls his lips. I couldn't have dressed you better myself. Actually, a friend of mine picked it up. He has good taste now. You turn and show off the back of your outfit and he chuckles darkly. Trying to make me jealous, Tal. You do like danger, don't you? If you're looking for your room, you'll have to talk to Hasher about that. He's handling accommodations. Hopefully my room is... near yours. This smile sends heat directly to your core. If it isn't, I'll be sure to rectify that in the morning. It gives you another long, slow, perusal. Then, with just traces of that predatory smirk remaining, returns to the professional demeanor of an alpha. Unfortunately tonight, I need a good night's sleep, though. It's gonna be a long weekend. What's going on? Alpha business, not yours. You roll your eyes and turn to leave, but he stops you with a hand on your arm. I'm glad you're here. He releases you, and as you run upstairs, the feeling of his hand lingers like a satisfying burn. You find Asher in the hallway, poring over some notes on a clipboard. Eh, wow, look at you. If Alpha Tau had a dress code, you'd be nailing it. So, where's my room? All the training today took it out of me, and all I want to do is sleep. He scratches the back of his neck, looking sheepish. Uh, since we're only expecting one initiate, we only have uh, one bedroom prepared. Now that there are two of you, well... So basically, we have to share with her. A door down the hall swings open, and Kella pops out wearing a smug grin. You're gonna have to fight me for the bed. His stomach sinks at the thought of fighting her again. You can have the bed over my dead body. Hmm, tempting. But as you can see, I've literally already moved in, and... I really don't want to have to clean your blood off my stuff. Enjoy sleeping on the couch, puppy. With another smirk, she slams the door in your face. I'm really sorry, Tal. Look, the couch isn't so bad, and it's only for one night, I swear. Don't worry about it, Asher. 
I'm so tired I could fall asleep on a rock. You head back down to the common room alone, where you flop onto the couch, wincing at how stiff it is as you rifle through your hastily packed bag. This is gonna be a long night, and I left in such a hurry I forgot to pack pajamas. I'd sleep in my underwear if I wasn't, uh, wasn't scared of some alpha towel walking down and seeing me. The alphas might be comfortable in the nude, but the only person you're comfortable sharing that much skin with is... Channing. You sit straight up, a plot hatching in your mind as you glance to the stairs. His bed is big enough to share, and imagine the look on his face if he found me in it. Besides, I'm lonely. I could use some physical contact tonight. I deserve some fun tonight. You creep up the stairs to Channing's room. Carefully open the door, prying. Pranked and doesn't squeak. The room's empty, but you hear the sound of running water coming from his private bathroom. I better make this quick. You quietly strip out of your clothing and in your underwear, groaning with relief when the cool air hits your skin. You crawl into his bed, sliding under the warm, down comforter. The softness of his sheets make you sigh. Channing really doesn't skip on the luxuries. You hear the water turn off, and a few moments later, he enters the room in his underwear. You would think that he would be naked. His, his body, still somewhat wet from the shower, glistens in the moonlight filtering through the window. The gaze drifts down to his shorts, which are pulled about three quarters of the way up, barely concealing his length. Sleeping might be more challenging than I thought. When he sees you, he stops short, his golden eyes flash with hunger, but all he does is quirk an eyebrow. I don't remember inviting you to join me. You didn't, but I knew you'd want me to. His laugh is warm and a little playful. <laughs> Mind reading is not a werewolf tell and tell. Are you sure? You look, uh, you should check the history books again. Maybe you missed something. For a long, silent moment, he watches you, and his lips curl into a cunning grin, predatory and suggestive. Alright, you can stay. It's chilly, and I could use someone to warm my bed. He climbs in the bed beside you at first. You think he'll roll towards you, but instead he turns away, settles in for sleep, leaving you wanting. Good night, Tal. Right. G good night. Roll on your side, too aware of his proximity to relax. Even from across the bed, you feel the heat radiating from his body. Then suddenly he's right behind you, pressing the length of his body against your back. I thought you were going to sleep. Your heart pounds so hard you're sure you can hear it. You shiver as his breath stirs at the hair of the, at your nape of your neck. I figured you, uh, might be cold. He wraps his arms around you, and you can feel his bulge press against your rear. You press back against him, heat pounding at your core when he breathes out a quiet moan. I am a little cold. Wanna warm me up? You stifle a groan as his lips skim fleetingly along the back of your neck, feather light and not nearly enough. I was thinking we could warm each other up. You suck in a breath and roll over your faces inches away from his, and he grips your chin, kissing you fiercely. His tongue presses into your mouth, firm and abandoning your hands, find the planes of his shoulders, desperate to touch him. You slide your hands between you, finding the bulging muscles of his pecs. Tell. Inhale sharply when your fingernails find his nipples, uh, lightly pinching and rolling them between your forefinger and thumb. I didn't expect him to be so sensitive. You lightly rub the pad of your thumb over one of his nipples, uh, flooding with heat when his he grows harder against the touch. Suddenly, he grabs you by the wrists, you blink startled, then he presses a biting open mouth kiss to your neck that makes you groan. I think you're comfortable forgetting who's in control here. You guide your hands away from his body and drape your arms around his neck. 
You gasp when he presses his thigh against your leg and rocks forward, creating fiction against your core. Unless, don't tell me you came to my bed for some kind of power play. Your eyes flutter shut as he continues his persistent rocking. The friction between your legs builds with startling speed. And so what if I... So what if I did? Hmm. Then you're fighting a losing battle, new one. He reaches behind you and grips your ass while sucking hickeys in the crook of your neck. You groan shamelessly. Wait, Channing... I need... Yep. Gonna have to keep an eye on this because of YouTube. I'm so close. And relax to so let me handle it. You grip his shoulders tightly as he reaches between your legs and... ruh -ruh. For a long moment, you think you might have actually blacked out. Then you finally pry your eyes open, Channing is sitting up next to you. In the low light, you see him lick his lips, the tip of his tongue lingering on the sharp edge of his canines. What about you? You rage for him, your arms limp and weak in the afterglow. He chuckles and catches your hand, kissing your knuckles. I'm perfectly caping, capable of taking care of myself. But that's not fair. I want to return the favor. Give me the only one who ends the a night on a high note. Making you beg for release was all the high note I needed. You frown when Channing leans down to graze his teeth against your jaw. Some other time, new blood. Tonight I really need you to rest. Fine, if you insist. I'll try to get some sleep. Good, and by the way, I thought I told you... Uh, Breaking into my room is against the rules. Pull another stunt like this and there will be consequences. Is that a threat or a promise? Just the truth. Sooner or later you're going to have to accept my authority. Whatever you say, Alpha. He grunts, but as you nestle your head against his chest you feel a contented sigh rumble beneath your cheek. You smile and close your eyes. You're on a cracked road, shrouded in moonlit fog. Trees looming over you like gasping claws, and around you the sound of snarling echoes in the gloom. You turn, but it seems to emanate from all around you. And you know that whatever's making that sound is coming for you. I should stand my groom. Pushing down your fear, you plant your feet wide, curl your hands in a fist, the menacing growl grows closer. I'm not afraid of you. From the mist, a hulking figure appears, bounding towards you, a massive wolf, bared fangs glimmering with foam. You open your mouth to scream, but instead all that comes out is a mournful howl. The beast closes in terrifying snarl leaps towards you, but just as its teeth find your throat, you jolt awake. What? What was that? Far more real than any dream you've ever had, you take a deep breath to dispel lingering fear. The light from the moon casts long, ghostly shadows across the floor, and in your heart you know you're in more danger than you realized. And without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down in the description. Plenty of ways to support the channel, become more of a member of the community, and whatnot. So with that being said, uh, I do apologize about being late on this. Uh, if you watched the uh, Bloodbound thing yesterday, uh, I made uh, it known that I just, you know, didn't really get any sleep. I had a lot going on yesterday, and yada, yada, yada. Um, so I took a little bit of time and recouped, so here I am catching up on choices, so thank you all for watching, it means more than you know, and uh, again, I'll get to the rest here very soon. But uh, besides that, once again, thank you all for watching, leave a comment down below telling me what you thought of this chapter, and uh, I look forward to reading it. Thanks again, peace out.